This is what we know about the hotel. It is bigger on the inside than the outside. Do not go into room 63. Doors and windows do not stay in the same places. The hotel listens when you speak. The hotel watches. The hotel looks different to different people. We'll be at the hotel soon. The hotel is familiar. The hotel is a stranger in an alley. It is difficult to find information about the hotel online, and a degree of patience is needed. The language used to write about the hotel is difficult, tangled. But it is possible to hunt down small snippets of information, to trawl through history for the signs. Before the hotel, there was a farm on the land. The farm was a small building and cannot have had more than a few chickens, perhaps some pigs. Before the fire that destroyed the farm and the sale of the land, which led to the building of the hotel, a woman lived in the property, the wife of a descendant, and died there also. The woman seemed to be notorious in the surrounding area as someone who had some talent in prediction. At this time, there was recorded a spate of child deaths, which can now probably be attributed to farm runoff into the water supplies, but was then blamed on the woman and led to her being drowned in the pond out the back of the farm. Before she drowned, she was recorded to have scratched some words into the front door of the house. The words read, I'll see you soon. The hotel exhibits what might be described as personality traits. It seems to know the people who come and go within its walls. Perhaps, more insidiously, the hotel seems to collect people to it, has a magnetism that is sometimes impossible to ignore. The curse that follows the hotel might be placed solely on the unnamed woman who was killed there, but it seems likely that any unfortune came in fact from the earth itself, and that she was only the first person to note it. The hotel build is rife with issue, and for a long time, it looks like it may remain unfinished. The ground is sodden and swallows the foundations. There are accidents when scaffolding fails. Trees that are dug up one day reassert themselves over the weekend. Still, it is done. The building is finished in 1919. The style is Gothic revival, long chimneys, stained glass which dims the light, an orchard. This is where everything begins. In the 1950s, a poet better known for her meandering nature poems wrote a few lines about the hotel embedded in a longer, strange piece about a lost love and a failed suicide attempt. In the poem, the hotel appears as a dangerous place which reappears through history in different guises. A year later, the poet succeeds where before she had failed and is drowned in the sea off the North Norfolk coast. In the boarding house where she is staying is a notebook with scraps of writing, some scrawled images in pen, the most distinctive of which seems to be of the hotel, recognizable by its severe chimneys. Beneath the drawings, the poet has written, I'll be there soon. In the early 90s, there is a series of accidents at or near the hotel. The girlfriend of a relatively well-known married politician is found locked inside one of the rooms, starving, wild-eyed. A group of schoolchildren who are camping in the local forest get lost, and, when they are found, appear to have lost the ability to speak or understand language. More, smaller incidents abound. 
Room keys become embedded in the flesh of hands. People working in the hotel fall down the stairs or end up locked in the lifts. For a year, the hotel is closed for renovations, and when it opens up again, there is a time when nothing is recorded. The hotel is no longer the haunt of the upper classes, but becomes popular for weddings and anniversaries, for work conferences. The hotel seems to be seasonal, sometimes cyclical, in that years can go with relative peace, and then there is disturbance. What seems clear is that the hotel does not affect everyone in the same way. For some, it is possible to visit and to see nothing out of the ordinary. The hotel is not far from Cambridge or the sea on the train. In the winter, there are big fires in the bar, and the rooms are warm, dressing gowns hanging from the back of the bathroom doors. The newspapers are left outside the doors in the morning, and it is possible to order breakfast in bed. Sometimes there are oysters fresh that morning. A review online says, I really needed a break, and the hotel was perfect. I am so rested, I am so much calmer. A review online says, I saw her for the first time since she died, and she looked the same. The soap at the hotel is made at a Cotswold lavender farm, and the coffee is fair trade and good, with milk from a local dairy herd. A review online says, Next time, we are asking for room 63. For some, it is possible to visit and come away contented, looking forward to returning. For others, it is not this way. It is difficult to pin down exactly what type of person will visit the hotel and see it exactly for what it is. Often they are solitary, separated from their families, or preferring to live alone, troubled by social situations, nervous in crowds. Many drink too much or find it difficult to sleep, have obsessive tendencies. Almost all are women. Some find it hard to let go. Still, there are those who do not drink, who come with their families or friends, who enjoy crowded rooms and long phone conversations, and they too will hear how the TVs in the hotel sometimes speak to one another, or the windows move in the night. It is not possible with any certainty to go to the hotel and feel safe. It is not wise to ever do so. It is hard to say why people come to the hotel, despite most knowing the mythology surrounding it. The hotel is listed as one of the most haunted buildings in Britain. Accounts of activity at the hotel are widespread. For many, this alone is reason enough to visit, out of morbid curiosity or disbelief. But for some, those who work and live near the hotel, there is always the question of why? Why don't they leave? Why do they so often return again and again to a place that is clearly not only unsettling, but for some, dangerous? This question can only be posed by those who have not visited the hotel. To go there, even once, is to feel something that might be akin to a tidal pull which exerts itself against all better judgments. Not only is it difficult not to return physically after a prior visit, it is also seemingly hard to stop the mind wandering towards that building, tall and grey on the dark fenland. In 2016, the hotel sits closed for three years, Though there are occasional interested buyers, the hotel's reputation precedes itself and no sale goes through. Nature reasserts itself quickly. Mice breed in the walls. 
In the summer, teenagers break in and make fires in the dark rooms. Sometimes stray dogs or cats get in and become trapped, emerge all tooth. Occasionally, there are forays from groups interested in the occult or stray couples looking for a thrill. In 2019, the hotel is burnt to the ground. The fires can be seen from the motorway. In the grounds of the hotel, buried beneath a cluster of willow trees, a film camera is found. The footage is partly destroyed, but it appears to show a group of amateur filmmakers from York University who broke into the building the week before it was destroyed. The students are not yet to be found, and the footage on the cameras is inconclusive, ending abruptly, so it is not apparent whether they began the fire or had any knowledge of who did. Towards the end of the film, there are images from a particular room, the white walls damp and sagging with mould. In the bathroom, above the tub, the camera holds for a couple of moments on some graffiti, a single phrase visible, I'll be there soon. It is nearly impossible to collate and logically place all the stories about the hotel, to begin and then to find some sort of ending, a moment of catharsis. And in this beginning, what to include? The drawings of a small child in a Cornish nursery of a red door with the number 63 written on it? The email a woman wrote to her son the day before she died, in which she said repeatedly, I'll be there soon, I'll be there soon. The cathedral in Ely, which occasionally reported sightings in the night of a mirage hotel room set before the altar, the bed made, the TV on. And if a beginning is attempted and somehow made successful, where then is an ending found? Is it possible that the hotel ceases when it burned down? Or is it not more likely that the land itself holds some forbidding sense of identity? What grows there now? Nothing. What doors are there in the ground? Many. And is it possible that even though the hotel is gone, there is still some days a flash of it, a startling after image of a building, tall chimneys, open front door? It is not yet the end. It is time, tentatively, for a start. Fourteen stories of the hotel in the Fens. <laughs>